Okay, so, well, today was a big day in math, a big day in math. I'm going to be talking about lessons 26 and 27. I'm going to be putting them together because the concepts are very similar and, um, and the problems kind of go together. So to save a little time, I actually taught both lessons today anyway, all in one day. So that's what I'm going to be doing. But the first, before I get to the, uh, any problems on this particular page, I'm going to start talking about another problem. So I'm going to just number it number one. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take 16 and we're going to divide it into 456. And what's going to happen here, I'm going to start dividing it the way we've been dividing things, looking for remainders. So I'm going to start with my 16. How many, how many groups of 16 can I make out of 4? And the answer is 0. How many can I make out of 45? Not really sure. So on my side here, my little estimate area over here, I'm going to take 16, I'm going to round it to 20, and I'm going to take 45, and I'm going to say, okay, so 45, since I'm trying to divide into 45, divide by 20, it's more like a 40. Uh, this is my estimate, so I'm going to use my estimate symbol. And I want to divide 2. So here's my target here. So my target now is 16, divide, 16 times 2. So 16 times 2, that's a 12, that's a 3, that's a 32. Let me try one more. That's an 18, and that's a 48. Too high, so 2 is the 1. There's my 2. Here's my 32. I get a 3. I get a 1. Bring down my next guy. I have a 136. How many times does 16 go into 136? I have no idea. So once again, I'll round 16 to 20, my divisor, and I'll make 136, 140. So that looks like it's going to work nicely. Let me uh, divide out a couple of uh, place values there, and I wind up with a 7. So I'm going to try 16 times 7. Okay, there's a 2, there's a 4, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So let's see, 112. Let me try an 8, just to be safe, 16 times 8. I have a feeling this is going to work out better. There's a 128. Aha! Okay, so here's an 8. Here's a 128. I subtract, I get a 2, I get an 8, aha, so remainder 8. Now, this is the, the way the kids have been dividing all along. However, that remainder 8 we're going to start talking about because what happens if I wish to continue to divide to get a more, what I like to call a more exact answer other than 28 remainder 8 because when you have 8 left over, well, it all depends on what you're trying to do with the groups here. In this case, we're looking at 8 out of 16. We're trying to make groups of 16. If I have 8 left, that means, if you know a little bit about having 16 or 8 out of 16, we're looking at a half, a half of a group, because 8 is half of 16. So in other words, I really have 28 and a half. Now, if I want that as a decimal, if you know anything about decimals, that would look like 28.5. Now, how do I go about getting that particular decimal right off? right out of the gates after solving a particular problem. Well, here's how it's going to work. Let me get rid of this so I have a little more room here. I'm going to take the same problem, put it side by side so you can see what's happening here. Here's my 4, here's my 5, here's my 6. Now, most of the arithmetic I've done already, so I'm going to go much faster this time. 16 goes into 4 zero times, but it goes does go into 45 uh, twice for, let's see, 32, right? And I get my 3 and my 1. I bring down my 6. So far, so good. Same thing. Here's my 8. Here's my 128. And here's my 8 as my remainder. Now, here's where it gets fun. It gets interesting here. This is what we started talking about, this 8 right here, which is 8 ones. So I posed a question to the kids. Here's an 8, or here's 8 ones. Is there another way I could write a number? Or, the, or an, another number for 8 ones that has the same value as 8 in the ones place, but it looks a little bit different because I want to keep on dividing. I, and that's the trick. I want to keep on dividing. Right now, I can't divide. 8 divided by 16 doesn't work for me. However, what if I was to create an 80? Now, the kids, they actually came up with it. They said to me, hey, wait a minute. If I had 8 ones, this should be, uh, or how about 80 tenths? Because 8 ones, 8 ones is 80 tenths. How about 800 hundredths? And the list goes on and on and on. Trick is, 
And what we have to remember is these guys are all equivalent to one another. Now, since this is 80 tenths, I'm going to make sure I write tenths here so I know what I'm doing here. Because it really is 8 ones, but I'm turning with the 80 tenths just so I can divide. And now I can. So how many times does 16 go into 80 tenths? Well, once again on the side here, my little estimate area, same thing. I'm going to divide by 20. This is going to be 80. And I'll get rid of a couple of uh, place values. And this should equal 4. And if I was to multiply 16 times 4, but it's not 4, by the way. It's 4 tenths. And this is 80 tenths. So this is tenths. Okay. So that's a 4, that's a 2, that's a 6, that's 64 tenths. And I think I can get a little closer than that. I'm going to try 16 times 5 tenths. That's a 0. That's an 8. So there's my 80 tenths right there. Now, since this is 5 tenths, I need to plug in my 5. Now, if I just put in a 5 right here, the way it looks, that would be 5 ones. Now, wait a minute. We use 5 tenths. So the decimal needs to be placed in such a spot so that 5 is reflected in that place value. And the only place I can put that decimal is right here. So that the 5 is now sitting in the 5 tenths place, or that 5 is sitting in the tenths place. And here's my 80 tenths. I subtract. And I have nothing left. Okay? Now here's that point 0.5 I spoke about earlier. 8 out of 16 equals... 1 half or 0.5, so 28.5. So that's what we worked on today. And uh, so now I'm going to run a, another problem or two to see it in action. Okay? So here we go. 7 divided by 28. Now, these kids have an interesting time trying to just take a look at and wrap themselves around the fact that I'm taking 7 and dividing it by 28 instead of taking 28 and dividing it by 7. And they've been pretty good and saying, wait a minute, you know, my answer should be less than 1. Well, that's true. Because let's say if I only have 7 of something, I'm trying to make groups of 28. Boy, I'm really going to have to chop that 7 up into pieces. And that's the deal. Now, let's take a look. 20, 28 goes into 7 zero times. Now, what can I do to 7 so that I can keep dividing? I don't, wanna, I don't want to say 0 times for 0 and then I have a remainder of 7. I really want to come up with an answer that's, that actually has some more meaning to me. So what I'm going to do here is put in a decimal here and put a 0. So that 7 is now... Uh, 7.0 or 70 tenths. And now on the side here, I can have my little estimate area. Now I'm ready to go. So I'm going to make this 30 because 28 is about 30. And since I'm going to 70, let's say I make this 60, but it's 60 tenths, by the way. And I like putting that in. I keep having to put that place value in to remind me of what's going on. So where my digits go, where my, where, what, what value belongs to each of the digits. And that's a 2, or 2 tenths. So there's my target. So 28 times 2 tenths. So there's a 16, there's a 5, and there's my tenths again. So 56 tenths. Now I'm going to try the next one as well. 28 times 3 tenths. I love this method because I'm guaranteed never to multiply more than twice, which is great. So there's a 2 times 3, 6 plus 2, 8. 84. Too high. So here's my 2. Now here's that. Here it is again. Here's that 2 tenths. Where do I put that 2? Well, if I just put the 2 now, it's 2 ones. But if I put the decimal here, now it's 2 tenths. It's terrific. It, work, it works out very well. Here we go. There's my little subtraction deal here. I get a 14. 28 into 14. Again, I want to keep on dividing. So I have 14, which right now is 14 tenths. But now we want to add a 0. And once I add a zero, it's not 14 tenths anymore. Now it's 140 hundredths. Okay? So that changes my estimate as well. So I'm going to divide by 30. Once again, how many times does 28 go into 140 hundredths? Well, let's see. Uh, let me do 150 hundredths. Okay. And when I divide, I get 5 hundredths. So there's my target for my multiplication. And on the side, let me go over here now, 28 times 500. It's a lot of work. But once the kids get a hang of it, get the hang of what's actually happening here, they really start understanding where the digits go in the right place, what has value, what is the value of each of the digits. 
5 times 8 gives me 40. 5 times 2 gives me 10 plus 4. There's my 140. It's 5 now, once again. Here's that 5. It's in the hundredths place, 5 hundredths. The only place that 5 can go in my answer is right here. Because it's 5 in the hundredths place, it's 5 hundredths. Which gives me, oops, got to put my little hundredths there. Which gives me 140 hundredths. And I subtract and I get nothing. I'm all set. 1, 2, 5. So that's the deal. So as long as you're using your place value, you understand what fidgets in unit form, what value they have, and where they belong, and what the place values are, and you keep up with it, sure, it's a lot of thinking, but boy, it really makes sense. When you're, when you're coming up with an answer, when you're writing an answer, um, and you're calculating an answer. So terrific stuff. I'm really excited about this, and uh, I think it's great. Okay? Thanks so much, gang. Good luck. Take care. Bye-bye.